Hey, let me tell you something you probably never knew about glaucoma. Everybody can get it. And that's why it's important to get checked out and get your screeners done because honestly, you really never know. But in this video, I wanna give you the four things that I look for when I'm screening a glaucoma suspect. I'm Dr. Adesola for day, and I'm a sports vision optometrist and a glaucoma specialist. Welcome to the channel. Hey guys, so we're back with another episode. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you pulling up. But do us a favor, go ahead and give us a like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications so you're always made known every time we drop content on the channel. Now listen, what are we talking about in today's episode? We're talking about the four risk factors that I look for when I'm screening my glaucoma suspects. So coming in at number one, we always have to start with a very detailed case history. And that includes family history. So we're gonna ask you, hey listen, do you have any family history of glaucoma? Does anyone in your family have it? Do you recall anyone taking eye drops consistently to lower their eye pressure? Because glaucoma is a condition that can be passed down from generation to generation. So if you have it, or you know someone else that has it, it was most likely passed down from somebody in a previous generation. So if you're someone who is actually positive for a family history of glaucoma, you have it maybe on your mom's side or your dad's side or your mom has it or your dad has it, maybe even one of your siblings have it, it's something that we're definitely going to note and have to really pay attention to. So coming in at number two is where we check your IOP, also known as your intraocular pressure. And this is where we actually can see what the pressure is inside of the eye because we definitely don't want to see it elevated because that's what can cause that compression on that nerve, which can lead us to the glaucoma damage that we are trying to prevent in the first place. So there's a few different ways we can get this pressure. So one is with a machine called an NCT, which is a non-contact tonometer, okay? This blows air into the eyes, which spits back a number at us, which tells us what the pressure is. Now, it's not as accurate, but it is a way that makes it a little bit less invasive, but we do know everybody hates it anyway. And another way that we get the pressure is what we call an eye care tonometer, which is another handheld device that kind of shoots a little probe at the eye. You don't feel it though. Um, and it kind of gives us a rough estimate of what your pressure is in the eyes. Now the NCT is the most popular way that we get pressures in a lot of practices nowadays, but you will see an eye care tonometer. You will see a tonal pin. Now the traditional way that we normally get the IOP is with what we call Goldman applination, okay? Basically we take a probe to the eye. We've given you some eye drops that numb the eye and some yellow drops to help us see things in a fluorescent way that allows us to get the pressure of the eye very, very accurately, okay? This is the most accurate way that we can get your IOP. But sometimes depending on the patient and depending on the style of practice you're in, this can take a lot of time. So in most practices you go to, you'll see either an NCT, which is a non-contact tonometer, which is that air puff, or you'll see an eye care tonometer, or you'll see a tonal pin. All these ways are less accurate, but they are quick, they're fast, and they definitely give us a very, very good estimate of what that pressure is. Now, if you're somebody who has glaucoma, we're definitely not using those other methods on you. We need to be as accurate as possible. Now, the third thing that I look for is how thin or how thick is your cornea. So depending on the size of your cornea, that can determine how high the pressure actually really is. If your cornea is very thick, it will read an artificially high number, okay? So sometimes when it's high like that, we'll just check the thickness of the cornea to make sure that it's within the normal range, okay? If it's very thin and the pressure is elevated beyond 21 millimeters of mercury, that's something that's gonna make us definitely raise our eyebrows to say, huh, maybe we need to take a second look at this. And the fourth and last thing that I look for is your cup to disc ratio. Now, because I'm a foodie and I love my sweets, normally when I'm explaining what the cup to disc ratio is to my patients, I say it reminds me of like a donut, okay? Think of a donut, okay? And think of the inner circle, okay? Normally, when you have a donut with a nice inner circle, you have a nice thickness around it with a small inner circle, right? But in glaucoma, it's as if the inner circle starts to get ate out a little bit and ate out and ate out and ate out and ate out. What we call excavation starts to get excavated a little bit, right? Until where you have a very thin more margin or a thin border, okay? And sometimes what we're worried about is that if there's actually damage occurring, is that that inner circle, right, in glaucoma is starting to widen to the, to the outer circle of the actual donut itself, okay? Now the trick about that is that a lot of times that can happen when there's damage from glaucoma, but you can also have that in the eyes and it's also 100% 
normal. So sometimes we have to figure out, is this glaucoma? Or is this anatomical and they were just born with this? And we use these risk factors that we just went over to help us determine what type of suspect this is and what we're gonna do with this patient moving forward. So guys, what's the moral of the story? That you won't know a lot of these things unless you go get checked out by your local optometrist, okay? Because at the end of the day, glaucoma does not play fair and you just never know, it could be you. So anyway, with that guys, I'm gonna leave you alone. I'm gonna see y'all at the next episode found this video valuable give us a like comment subscribe share all that good stuff but always remember keep your vision clear peace